comparison to the water drum coming from the back. Right, that's different. Okay. Because those yeah. the cabin sides have changed. The laundry room sits okay. in a okay. different spot I'll to match down. the 750. Basically, we're gonna have just straight up steel brackets on the laundry room directly to the pool. Because but that's where it looks weird. Hi, I'm Sebastian, and we're here inside the Zenith Aircraft Factory. And uh, if you'll remember, a few weeks ago we posted a video as uh, as Calvin and John Humbard uh, assembled this rear fuselage assembly. So the fuselage assembly is basically where we left it off, and uh, this time around, we're going to come by and uh, do the forward section of the fuselage. So, Calvin and Roger, why don't you guys uh, take it on? So, of course, well, before I go on, uh, I've got Roger Dubert here with us. Hi, guys. And, uh, of course, Roger, everybody knows Roger. He just uh, celebrated his 30th anniversary with Zenith, so we're proud to have Roger. And then uh, this is my son, Calvin, uh, Calvin Heinz. And uh, Calvin's been working uh, together with John Humbard um, on the 701 project, uh, updating the 701 kit to the to the new style 701. And uh, John uh, is back home in Tennessee working on his uh, Super Duty uh, this week. So uh, rather than uh, delay the project, uh, Roger will be helping us out on this. So I think we're gonna first click on the firewall together. Calvin and I are gonna yep. click it together. And uh, if I'm correctly, this is a firewall for the tail dragger, correct? That's what we're looking at. So with the, um, with the original 701, uh, Chris Heinz had uh, had designed a uh, tail dragger conversion option, but it was very much a conversion of an airframe not really optimized for it. And with the uh, with the refresh on the kit, we've uh, taken the opportunity to integrate uh, the uh, different structural requirements and whatnot a little bit more directly. So it uh, it's really designed to fit either configuration uh, in a more traditional manner. Right, you know, the, so. <laughs> the, the original 701, again, was really designed for, uh, you know, as an easy-to-build airplane. And uh, originally, Chris probably didn't anticipate that it would be used in stole competitions the way it is today. And so uh, so now, you know, we're looking at uh, making it available, um, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the, some of these stole pilots that, uh, you know, um, really, you know, traditionally go with the tail dragger configuration. So we're going to offer it, continue to offer it standard as a tricycle gear, but uh, also uh, make it available for for tail dragger for those that want to fly that way. And Roger, you you fly uh, both tricycle and tail dragger. What's what's your take on that? Well, they all they all have their pros and cons. Uh, definitely a tricycle is going to be a lot easier to fly for sure, uh, but there's advantages to a tail dragger too, um, and just as well as disadvantages. Um, you just got to learn how to fly both of them. I mean, there's... Yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, of course, one of the wonderful things about being a pilot is just being able to learn, continually learn how to fly different different airplanes, different configurations. And, of course, you know, for new pilots, tricycle gear is probably better suited for that, isn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, for the for the ease of it, is, is tricycle is going to be much easier. But, uh, you know, a lot of airplanes look really nice as a tail dragger. <laughs> that's sexy curbside appeal yeah 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 okay. and you know as and, and for us you know as zenith aircraft company you know we we uh design and and build kits you know we we want to design and build kits that customers want to fly so obviously uh and you know we're we're number one currently uh for light sport aircraft and uh and i think uh you know and that's in large part because we we do offer airplanes that are that are that, that people want to fly that people want to build so we're really fortunate for that and we want to continue on with that and you can tell here on the firewall that uh, doesn't have the normal channel for the nose gear set up with the bungee or the new puck system and the tail dragger says it doesn't need all that reinforcement now the tricycle gear configuration will have the new puck system as standard um, with the more traditional build up on the front of the fuselage right 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 um, we just happen to have the tail dragger version sitting here today Okay. And still, and still, you know, you would have the tricycle, you'd have yep. the slots for the steering rods coming through. And yep. Slight differences between the two, but uh, with the tail dragger, you just need a lot less, um, a lot le less structure up front. So we're able to save a bunch of weight and have uh, a firewall specifically designed for that configuration as, a, as opposed to an awkward retrofit. Excellent. All right. We'll, we'll go ahead and yep. uh, start with the floor skin probably. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to be uh, adding a couple things to the bottom of the floor okay. and then looking at the top. I'll let you lead the way. We can yep. probably uh, get the bottom channel on, I would say. Yeah, and that's actually something I'd like to talk about a moment before we click that okay. into place. Um, 
There, there's a, a channel across the bottom on the underside of the fuselage for stiffness. And historically, that's all it's done. But uh, looking at a little bit, looking at things a little bit more, especially on the 701 without the, with the narrower cockpit and the um, smaller, uh, or in, in no space for a center console, um, we took this opportunity to revise this a little bit in order to double it up as a conduit for electrical and potentially fuel lines as well. Um, giving you something outside the cockpit, more flexibility on running pressurized fuel lines and whatnot, and uh, keeping everything nice, tucked away, out of sight. Yeah, that's a good idea. So it's a basically, it's a dual purpose uh, part pretty much. Exactly, maximizing on the space we have available. Now with the new mast hole, we try to uh, lay out the rivet holes where it's uh, user friendly, where you can't click it in the wrong spot. So sometimes uh, if you flip it one way, it won't click up. If you flip it the other way, it will click up. That way you won't have it positioned wrong. And that's kind of make it's kind of an idiot proof sort of. I didn't want to. Say, I didn't want to say that. I was trying to be uh, polite. <laughs> right, but the but bottom line, the, the part will only fit in one area. Is, is, is that yep. what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. You may have noticed us trying to put on a couple angles on the firewall backwards for a moment, and we quickly realized that the ends weren't fitting, the holes weren't lining up. Right. Just flip it around and. Everything went together perfectly. And um, obviously now you guys aren't using any instructions or, or any list whatsoever. Now, um, obviously in the kit, that's something that normally a you know, first time builder would have the benefit of uh, using uh, very detailed uh, manuals and instructions for that. Absolutely. When wh While it only goes together one way, there's definitely things you could do to kind of get yourself into situations that are awkward where you don't have good access or you need to undo something you've previously done in order to get something that may have been looked uh, looked over initially. And that's where having a good sequence manual, right? And step by step. Exactly. Um, the detailed step by step takes you through Move that one. And probably eventually you'll have uh, solid work or something like that. They can pick and choose yep. apart. And... <laughs> exactly. Detailed. Um, we use e drawings for uh, detailed models uh, for you to look at things in any configuration outside of what static images can do. Right. And we have a lot of customers using that with the Stoll CH750 Super Duty already. Yep. That new style of uh, documentation that we introduced with the Super Duty, uh, we've, we've learned. Uh, we think we've learned how to maximize on it, and it's going to be the, uh, in place for the new separate one as well. And this one goes here. Yep. Right Only there. lines up one way. <laughs> and it's kind of interesting to know baseball. this is Roger's first time assembling the new style 701. Yeah. So it's not like we had he had any real practice on this. Now, of course, you know, Roger. You built this 701 back here in back in what 98? 98. And uh, how many how many hours do you have on that airplane now? Uh, like 2,200 hours on flying. flight hours. That's yeah. pretty amazing, huh? And really, so. to be honest, don't fly it that often anymore. Right, so it's, right. It's I know. It's really been the last, uh, you know, the first, you know, 15 years we flew it a lot. Yeah, and it's still a lot of fun, isn't it, to oh, fly the 701? Yep. Okay, so what do you want So we've got these stiffeners on. Now we're going to look at the right seat here. front channel sitting here. But before we put it in quite yet, we're going to add a couple angles right. to it as stiffeners. We've got, should have one or two on each side. Okay. There and we are. Those of you that are familiar with the uh, Stoll CH701, uh, you'll see that a lot of this is pretty much identical. It's just that everything has been final hole size match drilled. So ready for assembly, uh, really very little fabrication. At the same time, if you look at some of the parts themselves, like like uh, Calvin was saying, this this piece right here, now you've got a lot more finishing on here. You've got these, these holes completely cut out. These are completely cut out that pr uh, previously were not pre-supplied, pre-cut. So it was a, before you had a little bit more work to do, now it's just, okay. Take the part, click them together, and uh, move on. Should only line up one way. I believe we want the flange on the outside, though. <laughs> Fumbling a little bit here, just seeing how it lines up. Yeah, the beauty of it is you get it, you get okay, it fixed, and you you get the part the right way right away, just because it only fits one way. Isn't it? Yep. Next thing everybody's gonna want is 
little labels and notes on the parts. Just I know, I know. Part A to part B, part yeah. B to part C. And, <laughs> and you know, with the CNC router, we sure. can actually do that. You know, pick up the Sharpie marker and actually sure. uh, mark some of the parts that way. I need to move them down to the seats. I'll move it down? Yep. Let's move the way the seats otherwise. Oh, okay. Just yeah, 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 go out of the way. <laughs> Now we are skipping over riveting here, so we're having to make a couple little adjustments in order to make sure the Clecos don't get in the way later. Right, right. But there. normally, normally you'd be Cleco or riveting at intervals during uh, the. Assembly. Yeah, and that's a good point. Here we're just Clecoing everything together rather than, than riveting. Of course, here you're going to need a bucket full of Clecos because normally you would just do a one section at a time, rivet it together, and then move on to the next section. Gear channel. Now, as far as uh, it's gonna be sitting on top. Uh, and so here, this is the front of the airplane right here, where the firewall goes. We're moving back here. This is the front of the seat, and then the below the seat, where the gear channel goes through. And that's that care single uh, uh, spring gear that uh, carries through underneath. Little rudder cable fair leads. And again, yeah, they're supplied just the way you see it, like that and uh, just Clico in place and then get riveted in place. That's beautiful. And little details like that save a lot of time, don't they, Roger? Oh yeah, definitely. There's another bearing piece for the torque tube. I can get the copper ones or the gold ones. Okay. Yep, 316. And when exactly. you built your 701, you had never really built anything before, had you? Um, at that stage, we built a lot of, you know, 601s and HDs and stuff. But uh, as far as the 701, no. And, uh, it was quite challenging because uh, there was a lot of information in the drawings and we've changed and learned a lot over the years. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so now let's put the tunnel. Yep, we're going to click a couple new seatbelt bracket, as you can tell from the old 701. Fun uh, integrating what used to be two, three parts into a single, into a single part, allowing right. us to save weight, save complexity, make it easier and uh, simpler to build. Yeah, that's the name of the game, isn't it? Always try to make a, make a better machine. And you know, the 701's been out since 1986, um, and, and the basic design really hasn't changed. And the reason for that is it's just a phenomenal little airplane, mm -hmm. isn't it? And it does great handling, uh, great slow flight, great short takeoff and landing performance, very compact. And uh, so, what, you know, updating the, updating the kit uh, will make it easier to build, and like Calvin was mentioning, kind of re-engineering some of the some of the parts to make it stronger, lighter, and easier to build all at the same time. And uh, so we really uh, look forward to introducing this new kit, uh, with all these new features. Get that lined up there. Yep. And so yeah, here we're just doing another little sub-assembly, ready to place it into that forward fuselage section. The reason I'm having to click over from the inside here is again, since we're not taking uh, breaks to rivet everything, we just need to make sure that the Clecos are out of the way when we get the seats in. So with the small tunnel assembly completed with a couple angles added, we're now just going to slide it into place. All that's happening is it's just going inside what we've done before. Oh, we gotta pop it inside the angle here. I think it was in the way. Yep. This is under a bit of tension, so it may take a little bit of uh, finesse to get it in, but once it's in, everything will line right up. Under. Yeah, it looks nice. And the 701, you know, being a being a relatively, you know, small airplane, compact airplane, it's designed quite efficiently in the sense the uh, the seat itself is part of the structure, so it's uh, it's not it's not a separate seat like it is in the in the larger CH 750 series, and uh, the advantage to that is of course it's it's lighter and a little bit more a uh, little bit more efficient that way. Uh, disadvantage is that the seat is part of the structure, so it's not like a large adjustable seat, and that's one of the reasons you know our 750 series exists. It's just a larger larger series, so you know depending on the on the pilot's uh, size and, and uh, you know, the type of flying they plan on doing, uh, you know, the 750 may be better suited for that Just versus like the, the 701. And uh, so now uh, moving on, putting the yep. the center seat belt 
brackets. Tying everything directly together into the gear channel. Right, yeah, those that have built earlier 701s will appreciate these differences. It's just oh, easier yeah. easier to build and uh, and actually stronger at the same time. Yep. Okay, so we'll do those later. Yep. So now we're at the point where we're gonna put one of the cabin sides on. Okay. This is going to be a bit of a departure from the more traditional procedure. Uh, just like we did on the rear fuselage, we're gonna be leaving off one of the sides until we join the two. And the cabin side is gonna be solid riveted, as you see, just like the original 701 from the factory kit. Yeah, and that's always been supplied as a, as a sub-assembly just like that, uh, already uh, rib riveted at the factory and uh, ready to put together. This one's a little rough looking because it is a prototype, so, um, but it's uh, ready to uh, basically slide in place. Yeah, it's just more of a structural area. It needs to be solid riveted. So we want to slide one, one nope, set. We're going on the fuselage. Put it on the, on the front. Yep. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's and see. Like Sebastian was mentioning with the, the slightly rough looking parts, let me go in between. Yep. Um, this is all still production prototype stuff at the moment, um, ensuring that the fit, work, uh, refining the procedure. It's going to go underneath. So here we're just sliding the pre-assembled cabin side into place, finding those first holes, and it's going to click go right in. And you know, like we had determined last time building that larger rear fuselage, one person can really do all of this. Of course, having an extra set of hands just makes it a little bit easier. And Roger, you're pretty fast with your Clecos. I know at uh, <laughs> at our annual homecoming, uh, we've been running uh, Cleco competitions and uh, of course, those of those those of you that are Zenith builders uh, can appreciate that because uh, you do end up putting quite a few taking in and taking out uh, uh, quite a few rivets and cle well Clecos right. before that. So uh, you get a pretty firm handshake from that, don't you? Right. <laughs> and you know, even though you have a match cold section or, or aircraft, you know, the more the Clecos, the better off you are. But you don't need as many. But still, it's it's nice to use as many as you can. Have. Yeah, I would I would agree, especially yeah. when it's final hole size, because right. the the fit is very precise. And by putting the Cleco every second or third hole, you're really uh, maximizing on that fit. Yep. Okay. And, and you may have seen us sometimes trying to finagle parts into place because uh, sometimes the final fit just is pulling things in a little bit. It's not always just a flat surface. So uh, those Clecos are really help to hold everything perfectly in position. Yeah, and if you had a, an awl or a couple, you know, awls or ice picks or something like that to center the holes, it helps. Right, right. Okay, now we're gonna slide it in the rear fuselage section. And so this is the rear fuselage that we assembled a few weeks back. And uh, so we're just throwing the pre gut hole. And we're just gonna align it. And there's probably several ways you could uh, to go on the outside here. Mm -hmm. Yep, this is doable by a single person. You just need to prop up the front I'll hold it. with the sawhorse. Um, right, Roger's got that right now. I'm gonna pop a few clicos in there. And you could you could actually build the whole front section, build the whole rear section, and bring them together. But if uh, right, that's that's how we've traditionally done it. Correct. But um, in terms of optimizing it for ease of access as well as mm -hmm. um, making it doable by a solo builder. Yeah, um, that's interesting how, how you can do that a lot easier now. And I think that, that you know, by, by virtue of being final hole size match drilled, that just makes that easier to split the task instead of finishing the section sure. completely, doesn't it? Yeah. Because um, we know the sections will, will join up. Right, and that's really why we're able to get away with this. Put yep. one on there. Is because uh, previously you really had to get the entire forward fuselage together, get everything on there, get everything situated with your cabin frame, make sure everything's squared off. Whereas now we're confident that um, we're gonna end up in the correct configuration. Everything's going to line up. You're not gonna end up with a twisted fuselage if you do it this way. Right, it really is self-jigging in other words. Can we lift a little bit, Roger? Okay. There you go. Just gotta get that slide back. Just gotta get that first hole. Yeah, the first hole is always the trickiest one, isn't it? After that, they just follow follow suit. Pretty much. Here we yeah. go. It's looking good. Slide that in just a little bit. There we go. 
Okay, let's get the other cab inside. You see in here it's just gonna be sagging a little bit because the structure's not fully there. But now we're just going to add the second cabin side. And it's gonna tie everything together. And there's a front and rear to the cabin side. The rear is a longer extrusion and bent angle to follow the rear fuselage. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason this section is solid riveted because you know around the cabin area like that because we don't have longerons being able to go right through the center of the fuselage, uh, we we use a few you know larger solid buck rivets to these high stress areas. And because the buck rivets do take a little bit more skills and tooling, uh, we do this for you at the factory. So that as the builder, the only type of riveting you really need to do are the uh, are the, the blind or the pull type rivets that work just as simple as pop rivets. Now the reason we're putting on the uh, second cabin side after the fact as opposed to doing it both at once is due to the taper of the fuselage, mm -hmm. you would otherwise have to thread both those longerons in at once and that can become a, a pretty tricky procedure and not really feasible by yourself. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense to just do one side at a time then, doesn't it? Okay, add a few here. Yep. Let's just work our way up. And then next, we'll probably install the firewall to the front. Yep, let's get the firewall in place and then and uh, start the right looking there. at the rest of the seating area. You know you're making progress when that table is nearly yeah, okay. empty of parts. Goes inside as well. Okay. It's gonna sag a little bit until mm -hmm. I get these in. So now let's get that. Yep. If you could yeah lift a little yep. bit. There we go. And that launcher on sliding right in. Lined up with the poles. It's got two. Yeah, it's a thing of beauty when everything just lines up like that, isn't it? <laughs> sure does save a lot of time. Okay, you want to click on the bottom? Sure. The firewall self jig into the. So we're just going to be setting that in place. And the firewall, you know, like the name implies, it's a, it's a barrier, so it's a, it's a galvanized steel part. It's a little bit heavier than the aluminum, but uh, provides a good barrier. Sure is small compared to the Super Duty firewall. Yeah, smaller <laughs> airplane, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then Absolutely. we have... Uh, a self-jigging hole on the cabin sides to the firewall yep, for the just... correct angle of the firewall. Right, so there's really no calculations at all in here. No. You know, you'd no need for tape measure or protractor or anything else uh, like some of the earlier construction. Everything has been jigged for you. Get the seat back in first in those corner angles. Yep. And what part are you holding on right now? That's the seat bottom. We're gonna put the seat back in. Oh, the seat first. back, right, yep. uh-huh. That way we won't have to. Say that. That's right. We had we had right we had installed that in our last like video this. at the yeah. very end, and we took it back out, I guess, just to be able to get inside to go in the. Uh, yeah, when you're threading those extrusions in, it's just a little bit easier with this off. Yeah. There you go. Oops. Get that first hole. And, and like I was mentioning earlier, you know the. The, the seat structure in the 701 design is actually part of the airframe structure. So it's a uh, very efficient design, provides a seat back as well as, uh, as uh, a bulkhead for the, for the fuselage strength and stiffness. Yep, ties everything together. Reaching around back there is just to uh, tap a tap an angle into place. So you have the baggage back, and then the seats, and then the forward area. So and we're gonna the bottom. The seat bottoms come in next, I guess, right? Sure. Just about. We're gonna add those. So the little triangular corner gussets. You want to add those next? Yep. They are substantially more difficult to put in after the seat fans. 
Yeah, so. and that's where, again, experience matters, and that's why we, we, we really provide sequential instructions, because some air, some parts are just easier to, to install before others, especially with the access uh, that, that, that it may cover up. Yeah, that's really been a, d a driving design principle as we adjust the parts is, and think about procedures is uh, making it easy, straightforward. You're never in a position where you're having to climb into a confined area to work on something. And now, with that all in place, we are going to put our seat pans in. Now, this is now is there a right and left or just top and bottom? There is not a right and left. Okay. Being flat pieces, they are symmetrical. So I would say... And even all the pre-drilled holes are exactly symmetrical mm -hmm. as well. Okay. Because I guess if it doesn't matter which way it goes, it, this way. it, it will have the benefit right. of doing that. There like we this. go. Yep. It's only going to line up one way. It's been a few years since Roger's built a 701, hasn't it? Well, the parts look a little bit different. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> so we line up our slots on the inside of the cabin side. Yep. And... Just go ahead and start getting those Quicos in. Okay. Here. Getting the first one into the tunnel. Once again, it's just pulling everything in, locking it all together. And you know, in many ways, this forward uh, fuselage section, that's probably one of the more complicated areas in the entire airplane it is because everything it's kind of the central point of course a cabin that's where you're sitting inside uh, of course you know then of course the rear fuselage attaches and the forward cabin comes together so there's just a lot of different parts like that the wing is a much flatter larger area it becomes a little bit easier and more logical and way now to probably at this stage you're really starting to think about your electrical your plumbing your hydraulics for the brakes uh, just there's so many things and uh, can you build the whole complete fuselage without worrying about the fuel system and wiring? Yes, but a uh, little access underneath the seat might make it easier. Yeah, it's It'll always... save you a lot of time yeah. in the long run. Exactly. Right always here, smart to think, think a little bit ahead, especially if you know what engine and, and fuel system you'll be installing and, and going from there. Since the seat pan is under a little bit of tension, getting that uh, first um, yeah that first hole first click going is particularly tricky. So Roger's uh, showing off right now. Uh, yeah, let me his favorite get a, technique. Get a little close up of that. Pull it out and put it back in. So that's just to help. Yeah, it's just a, it's basically an ice pick. Uh, yeah, they shape. call it an all. Help center that initial that's a, that's that initial hole. Term, but right. Yeah, yeah, that really okay. helps lining those uh, those holes up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll do the same on this side. Exactly the same. We just kind of shape it into place, slide it in, click those right up. Yeah, that all tool sure sure helps uh, get those initial plecos in, doesn't it? Let's get the rest of the front first. Could you grab this hole for me, Roger? Oh. It's got to be pulled forward a little bit. Yeah. Nice, nice. And I can grab a few more. I want to get that. Okay, you want me to get that? There we go. You guys are getting ahead of yourselves a little bit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> there you go, put one right there. <laughs> Well, we do this at the end of the day because it's nice and quiet in the shop. Uh, the factory has, has, has shut down for the day for the production. Makes, uh, makes it quieter to make, produce this little video for you all without too much background noise. So, okay. you know, Roger's working after quitting time already, aren't you, Roger? I know what you're doing. You're trying to want me to build another 7 That's what it is. <laughs> well, you know, I, I bet you you wouldn't say no because this would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? <laughs> yes. Now, if you were to rebuild a 701, in a nutshell, what would you do differently in terms of the features? I mean, every time you build something, you're going to build it a little differently, add something or something different that you've done. Uh, probably always the, the wiring, the plumbing system, how you do it, how you run it. But as far as the structure, the design, 
I couldn't tell you one thing right. that I would change. Yeah. Well, good for you. Uh, you know. And what about engine? You, would you stay with doors, the Vortex? The doors, I, I oh. kind of like the original 701 sliding window, but maybe you have a door where the window pops up. Well, there is an idea. I yeah. like it. Rotex, yeah, I really like the Rotex on the 701. And so you first built it with an 80 horse because I think the 100 horse wasn't even available Correct. at the time, was it? Correct. And that was great. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I've flown it all over the US with the 80 horse and it worked great. But when I put the 100 horse in there, it's like, man, don't yeah. go back to the 80. And yeah. that's with anything when you, you know, yeah. go, because the Rotex 100 horse didn't gain any weight, it just gained the horsepower. So. Right, right, right. Right. Yeah, and especially for stall performance, like I mean, you do notice that extra power. Do, sure. you, do you need it? Probably not. But right. If, uh, right. But but you will notice that difference. Right. That looks good. All right. Yeah. yeah. We're all wow. tied together here in the uh, seating area. And the beauty with everything already being pre-cut like this, it really shows good workmanship. Like, I mean, it would mm -hmm. reflect well on the finished product because originally, you know, some of these items, you had to cut out the skin. So the fit and stuff would depend a lot on how well it was measured. And now it's done for you. So the finish is really nice. And a lot of the stuff you wouldn't end up seeing with your seat cushions in place, but there are there are in, in, other instances on the, on the aircraft where uh, anytime you'd be snipping yourself, uh, be pretty pretty difficult to get a nice clean finish right what? it's a lot of work and the, the original 701 uh, we just supplied a square piece for the seat bottom and we show in the photo manual you take like a cardboard or a paper template and you you figure out mm -hmm. this side you figure out this side tape them together lay it on your yeah, aluminum yeah. trim them out <laughs> and it's all it's all very doable stuff but it's time yeah, consuming it it's is it's time consuming and, and, and like I was mentioning it, it'll reflect the workmanship will vary from individual to individual so we're basically done here now of course you know we don't have a, the the chrome molly steel uh, cabin frame we can grab um, it. part so we can kind of put it in position and uh, this is all the, the aluminum work right here and uh, have and, uh, it right here now that's again now that's a that's a, a part that's probably the largest part in the airplane in the sense it's a it's a bulky pre-made uh, a part that's welded at the factory chrome molly steel um, again, as a kit builder, you don't need to uh, you don't need to weld anything yourself. All the welded parts are supplied welded from the factory. Obviously, uh, welding uh, pieces like that does require more skill and, and equipment and so forth, which is why we do it at the factory. So it's supplied pre-drilled. So you're just kind of doing the same thing, lining all the parts uh, yep. up. Let's aren't get you? the other side locked in so everything looks good. And this is another tricky thing, Roger, isn't it? When mm -hmm. you're, uh... oh, that's what I've done on the wrong side. Put it in the wrong hole. Now, there's a couple additional angle brackets to lock this all in, but uh, for the moment, we're just gonna get it into place. See how it all squares up. Oh. I'm just not as, <laughs> I'm just not as skilled as Roger with the Clico pliers. Sometimes I slip up a little bit. <laughs> Which hole? I don't know. Last. Here, let's just move my wire. Yep. Yeah, there's good. a couple additional little angles to tie this in 100%, but uh, as you can see, it, it forms the shape. Mm -hmm. Nothing's twisted, it's all, it's all there. Whereas previously, you spent a fair bit of time with a level. Correct, because the original 701 had aluminum uh, pipes going to the back. You had to cut and trim those. And there was a lot of trimming on the cabin frame that you had to... And I see we got uh, rid of the diagonal in here Correct. as well. So, so we're going to have probably a raised roof to add a little bit of more headroom, plus a little bit more uh, lift on the aircraft too. Nice, nice. Yeah, without the diagonal tube right there, you're already gaining a little bit of headroom. Mm -hmm. And um, additionally... <laughs> These actually make pretty nice handholds for getting in and out without yeah. having to add additional additional handles elsewhere. So yeah, well, good something job. we've learned on the 750 that uh, yeah. we're uh, happy to introduce here. And something I'd like to mention real quick is that we're leaving it off at this stage because this is where you would um, start going about your controls installation. With the one of the sides off the rear fuselage with everything open and accessible up here, you'd get uh, your rudder pedals with the brakes installed. You mm -hmm. get um, the torque tube, the stick, as well as all the belt cranks, push rods for the flapperons and uh, control cables to the tail. With, with it at the stage, you have really perfect access to everything. And um, it really speeds up and makes easy uh, 
what used to be a pretty uh, time consuming and awkward process. Well, that's great. Thanks for the update. Uh, yeah, that's good information. Uh, took a little bit longer than I was expecting, but it's uh, still under half an hour. So I think that's, uh, that's that pretty incredible. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thanks guys. Thanks for the update. And we'll continue to update as we make progress on this uh, new 701. Thank you. Lightest bit off it should be a little bit tighter with that. With but that you're going to have two holes for the engine mount. Yeah, two bolts. Okay. Yeah. Uh, original, original seven.